I'm going to show you how to build an AI agent starting from scratch, a simple one using Landflow. Now, here's the good thing. We're not going to have to write any code to have the agent working because Landflow is going to allow us to build it uh, using visual components. This Landflow, by the way, it's probably the best tool that I've found so far to build AI applications. It's incredible and it's open source. So I'm going to ask you, just go to the repo and start their repo. You're probably going to want to come back to this multiple times. Now, in today's video, to make things simpler, I'm going to be using a hosted version of Lamflow. It's hosted over data stacks. You can use that version as well. You can sign up for a free account and use their version, or you can run all of these locally on your computer. Now, I'm starting uh, using like a template agent that Data Stacks offer. That's great because it saves me, you know, a few minutes of, of combining all of these components. We're gonna go through all of these components. We're gonna add to this agent so you can see the capabilities here. So. Here is what I have. I have one big component here that's called agent. This is the core of the operation. Now we're going to be connecting to this agent an input and output so we can actually send instructions to the agent and the output so we can see we can get back the agent responses. And then we're going to keep connecting tools to this agent. And those tools are the ones that are going to be used to solve different problems. Now, where are all of these components coming from? You get here on my left, you can see a huge list of, of categories and components uh, under these categories. Like, for example, if you want to use a vector store, uh, here you get a huge list of vector stores that you can just drag and drop into your, your you know, canvas here. And, and make the necessary connections. If you want to use uh, different tools, here you get a huge list of tools, Google Search, Search API, Tableau AI Search. If you want to add memory to your agent, here you, you can add like a Redis memory, whatever memory you want to add. If you want to add logic components to create uh, like branching and different workflows, you can also do that. And it's all visually. All right, so let's start with the agent here. Let's see what are the parameters that we need to specify. So first of all, we're going to be using OpenAI as the, the model provider. So the engine that's going to be powering our agent is going to be the OpenAI API. Specifically, we're going to be using GPT-40 Mini. Obviously, we have support here for all of the OpenAI models. I'm going to be using the Mini one here. And I'm going to be adding the API key, my personal API key to this agent. So I use my OpenAI API. All right, so that's awesome. Here I can specify the instructions for this agent. In this case, they are the default ones. You are a helpful assistant that can use tools to answer questions and perform tasks. Use Markdown to format your answer properly, embedding images and URLs. Okay, so that's, that's good enough. Uh, and then you can see here, there is a connection point for tools. There is a connection point for the input to this agent. So anything you want to send to the agent, you will connect to this input. And you have a connection point for the response that this agent is going to provide. So you can imagine, let's say you want to pre-process that response before showing it to the user. You can add different components to this response and then add the chat output at the end so you can display that answer. So for now, just to make things simpler, I'm going to have a chat output here, which is basically displaying the output of the agent in the playground. When we try this out, when we run this agent, uh, we want to get that output in the playground. That's what the chat output component is going to do for us. And then to gather the input, I have a chat input component here. And it is very simple. This is where you can pass text, and that text will be sent as an input to the agent here. See the connection? That's what's going to happen. So that is a very, very simple agent. And then there are a couple of tools that I added to this agent. I connected those tools to this agent. The first one is a URL tool. 
And this URL tool can fetch specific URLs. So if we want to access one specific URL, this tool will be able to go to that URL and scrap the content of that URL and send it back to the agent. So that's going to be helpful whenever we want to read the content of a URL uh, out there. So there is actually no parameters needed for these URLs. It's going to work out of the box, which is great. There is another tool here, which is just a calculator. This tool will be able to perform basic or arithmetic operations on a given expression. So anything that we want to add or multiply or divide or anything like that is going to be done by this calculator. I connected both tools with this tool entry point here, connection point of the agent. And that's it. So literally building this is going to take five minutes where you put all of the components that you want together. And now you have a fully functioning agent. Now I'm going to try this out and then we're going to add some more components to build, to make this agent a little bit, let's, let's call it smarter. Okay. So let's first try this out here. You can just click on the playground button and this playground button is just going to open a session where you can just ask questions to the agent and see the responses. So let's start with something simple. Let's do something like, huh? Compute 56 plus 89 divided by 45. I don't know, something very simple. So we want to test that this agent is capable of using the calculator tool in order to come up with the answer. So let's wait for it to run. So you can see here, uh, it's going to tell us that the answer is 57.98. Let's check what happened, which is what I actually care about. Notice that was the input is the human set compute 56 plus 89 divided by 47 by divided by 45. So the tool calculator. So we're using the calculator, which is great. This is the expression that we passed. And the answer back was 57.97. All right, so this is awesome. The agent is using the calculator. Let's see if the agent is capable of using like the URL tool. So I'm going to say, uh, summarize the, pay the Wikipedia page about deep learning. Okay, so let's see if the agent is capable of finding that URL, grabbing the content, summarizing the content and displaying it here. Now, there is something interesting here. I'm not specifying the URL. So I'm relying on the ability uh, of ChatGPT or the GPT-40 mini model to know what the URL is, pass it to the URL uh, tool, retrieve the content and then summarize it. So we got here the summary. Let's see what happened behind the scenes. So here you can see the tool was the URL fetch content text and the URL was HTTPS and Wikipedia org. Okay, so this knowledge obviously is coming from GPT-4O's mini memory, right? So that's where the knowledge is. Um, the model asked the URL fetch tool to retrieve that specific URL. It got the content back and then it summarized it for us, like 4.0 mini summarized the content for us. All right, so this is awesome. So this agent is capable of using a calculator, is capable of just fetching content from a URL. Let's add, uh, let's add another new, a new component here and see what happens. So there is, a tool, specific tool, which is the Wikipedia uh, API tool, right? So let's see if we can add this here. Let's see what we need here. All right, so there is an input for the tool, uh, a language, and how many results come back, okay? So let's give this a try. I'm gonna add it, I'm gonna add it over here, that's fine. I'm gonna grab the tool, and I'm gonna connect it with my agent as a tool. This starts getting messy here really quick. All right, so this is better. So now my agent is supposed to return multiple results from Wikipedia, okay? So if I go to the playground now, I'm gonna start a new session. 
and I'm going to say, uh, what is the best Wikipedia page to learn about activation functions? Let's see what happens when I ask this. <clears throat> Supposedly, the agent is going to go to the Wikipedia page and return all of those pages. All right. So it's telling me the activation function page. So let's see what happens. Oh, look at this. So definitely. So it went to the Wikipedia tool with the query activation functions. And the output was the page activation function summary, the page multi-layer person trump summary, the page softmax function summary. So it returned the summary of four different pages. That was one of the parameters of the Wikipedia tool. And then we got back from, you know, obviously the model then uh, made a decision and gave us back, let me see if I can close this, gave us back the best summary of that specific page. This is pretty awesome. Uh, I'm gonna do something else, not wearing the line of adding stuff here. So I'm gonna be using the search API. So I want my agent to be able to search the web. And maybe by adding this, we can get the agent to perform or use multiple tools at once. So let's let's do this. Uh, I'm gonna add, add the search API tool using Google. I'm gonna need an API key. So I'm gonna be using, this is the search API website. So I do have an account here. So I do have an API key that I'm gonna be adding uh, here, let's see if I can find it in my keyboard history. Here's my API key. Obviously, I'm going to have to, uh, now that I showed it in camera, I'm going to have to remove that API key. That's okay. And now I'm going to connect this as a tool with my agent. So now my agent can also search the web using Google. All right. So what can we do with this? Let's give this a try. I'm going to start a brand new session. And I'm going to do something a little bit more complex. I'm going to say, what's the population of Madrid, Spain, plus the population of Florida, US, divided by five? I mean, I know this is just, it's just a test. But I want to see if the agent now is capable of combining multiple tools in order to come up with an answer. So ideally, the agent is going to search the web to find the value of the population of those two cities, add them up, and divide it by five using a calculator. All right, so we got an answer back. Let's see what happened here. All right, so accessing the Wikipedia. So it did not search, it went to Wikipedia. That's okay, population of Madrid, Spain, then uh, population of Florida, US. So those were two requests that the agent performed with the Wikipedia tool. And then he went, so accessing Wikipedia, accessing Wikipedia, and then he went with the calculator and found those two, obviously, and added them up and then divided by five. Uh, let's see what the output was. This is the output. All right, the population of Madrid, Spain is approximately blah, blah, blah. All right, so this is pretty awesome stuff. Now, obviously, it did not search the web. It just went with a different tool, which is totally okay. Sometimes it's gonna search the web. Sometimes it's just gonna go with a different tool. Uh, let me just, just, just for, for the sake of it, uh, can you search, uh, can you search and tell me who he is. All right, so I'm gonna search for myself. Let's see if Google has any information about me, what the model says. I'm supposedly, right now, the agent is going to use the search API. So there we go. <coughs> All right, <coughs> so the tool, still going to Wikipedia, and the output said not good Wikipedia search result was found, which is great. And then it went to the search API and then it returned five results from the search API. Uh, look at this. This is, this is great. This is my LinkedIn. 
account. This is my GitHub account. Uh, this is my personal website. Um, this is an article that I wrote. Uh, this is just my media account. So it returned all of that from, from the search results. And here is just a summary of who I am. This is pretty awesome. Uh, and especially it's so simple to get it done. Now, what, what do you do with this when you're done with this? Well, obviously you can just get an API and like basically you can host your agent and make calls to your agent through this API, assuming that you are going to publish this. Uh, it it's super, super cool, super, super fast that you can build these sort of applications visually without having to write any code. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention is, uh, yes, you can access the code behind all of this. So if you have the inclination, the knowledge to go and make modifications to the code, you can definitely do that. You can modify everything that you see here using Python. And uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that remember, all of this is open source. You can run it off of your computer. Um, this is a great, great way to start building, to start learning how to build AI agents and to start actually building applications that work. So hope you enjoy it. I'll see you in the next one.